Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, this, this lesson today, before I read the scripture, this lesson today comes from the heart of God for those of you who've been asking, God, I don't have enough. And listening to Holy Spirit speak because I believe right now you have enough to glorify God. And today the title of my message is to use what you have. Amen. Straight from the, the heart of God, amen. Just use what you have. And many times we make excuses for why we can't do what God called us to do. Because it seems like there isn't enough. Well, we serve a God who is more than enough. Amen. Amen. And, and so, so these past few weeks, <clears throat> Holy Spirit has been dealing with me to talk to you about who he is. Amen. And how he can supply your every need. Praise the Lord. So in John chapter 6, verse number 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Underline that, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Amen. Philip answered him and said, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number of about what? Five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were seat, set down and likewise the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which remain over and above, over and above unto them that had eaten. Praise the Lord. So again, today my title is use what you have. Amen. Use what you have. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now, we have to have an attitude adjustment. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to have an attitude adjustment to know that we serve a God that's more than enough. Amen. And this attitude adjustment can propel us to the next level. Amen. Or <laughs> it can cause us to live a life that's stagnant. It's up to you. The Bible talks about renewing our minds. And I'm here to tell you and to show you biblical examples of people who use what they had and God got the glory. Amen. And I believe right now that God has surveyed your life and given you enough right now to prove that you could be faithful. Go to Matthew chapter 25. Amen. Let me just show you based upon scripture that each of us, God has given to us what we can handle. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And if you don't learn how to use what you have, God can't get you to the next level. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 25. Look at verse number 14. Matthew 25. Verse number 14. Hallelujah. Are you there? Look what it says. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. The Amplified says, to one he gave five talents, probably about $5,000, to another two, to another one, to each in proportion to his own personal ability. Amen. See, right now, what you have is your personal ability to handle. 
Praise the Lord. Now, many folk ask God, God, make me rich. But if God made you rich, you probably wouldn't come to church. Amen. amen. God, expand my territories. But if he done that, amen. Praise the Lord. You, you wouldn't appreciate who, who gave it to you. Hallelujah. But you know the story here that the one who had the five talents increased the five talents. The one who had the two talents increased those two talents. And then the one who had the one talent, the Bible says he went hidden. And so when the, when the master came back, he's, he said unto the one who's, who had five talents, who came and gave him another five talents, he said, you know, you're highly favored of God. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over this. I'll make you ruler over many. Amen. He said the same thing to the one who had the two talents and doubled his return. Amen. But to the one who had the one talent, Brother Pew, he said, you are a lazy, no good servant. That's my, that's my interpretation. That's my interpretation. Amen. You did not do nothing with what I've given you because you thought you didn't have enough to use. Amen. So he said, take that which was yours and give it to the one that was profitable. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And see, that's how some of, some of believers are right now. You're complaining to God about having just the one talent. And God says, what are you doing with what you have? If you would have took my money and put it into the usury, you could have got something back. But many people are sitting on their hands complaining to God, well, God, I don't have enough. I don't have this or I don't have that. And God say, just use what you have. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, see, see, people who don't use what they have will start to make excuses. Amen. See, and we must understand that God loves me enough <laughs> to get beyond my excuses. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, but your excuse could be a blessing blocker. Amen. It's like a hurdle that's in your way. Your excuse. It could be blocking your blessings from God because Every time God wants you to do something, you start making excuses. Well, God, you know, I, I can't do that. God, you know, I don't have the education. God, you know, I don't come from the right family. God, you know, you know me. You know, I stutter. Praise the Lord. And it could be blocking your blessings. Praise the Lord. Amen. And see, what you need to understand is just on the other side of your excuse is the blessing that you need. <laughs> So, 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 so I began to look and do some research of people in the Bible who God says, use what you have. Amen. Go to Exodus chapter number three. Exodus chapter four, rather. Exodus chapter number four. Because God began to talk to Moses about leading his, his children out of bondage. And when God began to talk to Moses, Moses began to make excuses about what he couldn't do. Amen. Exodus chapter number four. Can you help me preach to your neighbor? Say, use what you have. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at your other neighbor. Say, use what you have. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter four. Exodus chapter number four. Look at verse number one. Exodus chapter four. Verse number one says, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in your hand? Amen? Because whatever is in your hand, that's what I'm going to have you to use to glorify me. So, so Moses says, God, all I have is this rod, this stick. He said, that's enough for me to use. Amen? Because I cause that stick to become supernatural. Amen? It's not just a stick out of the forest. Praise the Lord. But when, it, when you put it in my hands, I'll make it special and blessed and give it back to you so that you can glorify me here on the earth. Amen. Just use what you have, Moses. So when Moses goes talk to Pharaoh, Pharaoh try to lay down his, have his magicians, you know, cause these various things to happen. And Moses just laid down the rod, praise the Lord, the one that God blessed. Amen. Because God said, just use what you have. And then when Moses got ready to lead the children of Israel out of bondage, Brother Robinson, they get to the Red Sea. Pharaoh is behind them. The Red Sea is in front of them. And God said, Moses, what's in your hand? Just use what you have. Amen. And God, Moses stretched out that rod, part of the Red Sea. The children of Israel walked on dry ground. Amen. Because he used what he had. So what's your excuse about what you don't have? God said, use what you have. 
Now, now, go to go to uh, First Samuel, First Samuel, chapter number seventeen. First Samuel, chapter number seventeen. Praise the Lord. Now, here's the story of, of this little scrawny guy called David. David really didn't get no recognition. <laughs> His brothers didn't even like him. Well, they were in the, the battle with these Philistines. And so David was at home minding his father's sheep. And so one day he decides that, look, I need to bring some food to my brothers. <clears throat> so he takes the food to his brothers and uh, his brothers get upset with him, asking him, why, why did you come out here to this battle? He said, man, I just came to bring you all some food. So what's the problem? But while he was standing there, he heard this Philistine talking trash about his God. And then David said, well, who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine talking trash about my God? And his brother said, boy, go home, go home, just go home. Go home. You have no business out here, just go home. Well, as the story goes on, David asked the question, don't, don't we have a cause? Everybody was scared of Goliath. He said, don't we have a cause? This, this guy's talking about our God. He said, look, if none of y'all want to go out and fight him, I'll go fight him. Amen. So verse 29, I got y'all all the way up to there. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 17, verse number 29. Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look what David says, man. This is very interesting to me because David was going to use what he had. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him, him, him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, the king, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of, of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. Hmm. How we diminish on, the youth in our generation yeah. who say that they can't hear from God. They can't do nothing for the kingdom. And, and David said, look, don't, 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 don't dismiss me because I'm young. Praise the Lord. I got something to do. Amen. I'll go fight this giant because all y'all scared. <laughs> and, he, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And he started to rehearse. See, see, when you know what you got, you can start to rehearse what God has already done for you. Amen. He started to rehearse. He said, look, look, my, I, I kept my father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And, and I went after him and smote him and delivered him uh, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. But now, now I, I need to read this out of the message because I want y'all to see something real quick. Uh, because, man, this, this thing got, gave me a revelation. Look what it says. Saul answered, you can't go, verse 33, and fight the Philistine. You're too young and inexperienced, and he's been at, at this fighting business since before you were born. David said, I've been a shepherd, tending sheep for, for my father. Whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I go, go after it, knock it down, and rescue the lamb. If it turned on me, I grab it by the throat, wring its neck, and kill it. Now, here's what, here's what God, here's what God showed me. And this is just a little side path, right? God showed me that just like David was minding his father's sheep, that Jesus was minding his father's sheep. And when the enemy tries to come and snatch you out of the flock, Jesus said, I'll go and take care of that devil for you, amen? I'll grab him by the throat and I'll kill him just for you. <laughs> Y'all, that's okay, y'all didn't get that revelation. That's okay. I got that revelation. I got that one, man. I tell you, man, when the Holy Spirit showed me that, I'm like, what you say? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Let, let, me, let me continue reading. Let me, what, what verse I'm on now? 30 what? 36, okay? I'm in 36. So look what it says. 36 says, uh, the servants uh, slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. 
And David girded his sword upon uh, up, upon his armor and, and and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Look, look, look what happened. So here's Saul, the king, who's scared to go fight Goliath. And David says, I'll go fight him. And then the first thing that Saul wants to say is, use my stuff. Amen. So he put all this heavy stuff on David and David said, hold up, man. I can't use this stuff. I haven't even proved this stuff yet. But what I have proven, I will use. Amen. See, see, that's see, that's, see, use what you have. Amen. See, see, there's something that you've proven. You've proven that prayer works. Amen. You know, you know that God will answer your prayer. Look, if you know that God answers your prayer, you got to use what you have. Amen. <laughs> David said, I can't, I can't use this. So, so look what David said in verse 40. And, and he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in the, in the script. And the sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. And the Philistine came and drew near to, unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear. And with the shield, but I am come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hands, and I will smite thee. I will take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the, of, of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all in the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Praise the Lord. See, see, when he had proven what he had. He had so much confidence. They say, look, man, you come to me with all your weaponry. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. I've proven this name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's a name that's above every name. That's the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So, so David, David went out there, man. He had his little slingshot. He had him five smooth rocks and he went out with what he had. See, I'm trying to tell you today. That you need to go back and evaluate what you have. Yeah. Take inventory. What do you have? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, because whatever you have, God can use it to bring him glory. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, go to uh, 1 Kings chapter number 17. First, yes, yes, it's getting kind of cold. 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter number 17. Look at verse number 8. 1 Kings chapter number 17. Let's start at verse number eight. What's the title of this message? Use what you have. Use what you have amen. Use what you have. First Kings chapter number 17. Let's begin at verse number eight. First Kings chapter 17, verse number eight. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. Look up. <clears throat> That's the key right there. Amen. God already knew what this widow woman had. Amen. He already knew. And now he's going to prove her whether she believed him or not. He said, look, I've already told that woman when you get there, you, he, she, she is to take care of you. Uh, Y'all keep that in mind. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a, a, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and what? See, many times what happens is we devalue what we have. 
she said, look, I don't have enough to provide for you, which God told me to do when you got here. So she devalued what she had. She said, man, God, I don't have enough for you. I don't have enough for me. Amen. All I have is just a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook this, eat it, and die. But he, he said, well, what did God tell you to do? Amen. Use what you got. <laughs> That's okay. I'm happy by myself. That's okay. That's okay. Praise the Lord. And Elijah, verse 13, said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after me, make for thee and thy son. Look, he took the excuse from her. He said, look, I ain't even listening to what you say. I ain't studying your business. Look, you go do what God told you to do. See, sometimes you just tell, have to tell people I ain't studying you. Amen. You need to just go do what God told you to do. Isn't that ama amazing? That sometimes you just have to tell folks, just go do what God told you. Stop listening to the whiners and complainers, the murmuring and, and the, all that stuff, the belly aching. Just go do what God told you to do. Amen. Use what you have. For thus said the Lord of God of Israel, the barrel mill shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. So he told the lady, just use what you have. Amen. Use what you have and watch God get the glory. Because there is no way in the natural, watch this now, that what you have is going to multiply itself by itself. But if you let God take what you have and you begin to use that little bit, God has a way of multiplying that thing over and over and over again. I received that over and over again. Why? Because, look, God, I'm not trusting in myself. You are my supply. Amen. See, see, you, you know, you, I used to I used to watch my mother, man, with seven kids, single parent. And I used to wonder, how, how, how are we going to do this? How are we going? How are we going to have? Just the food on the table. Just to provide for us. And, and, and my mother, she would take in folk. And it's like, hold up, hold up. There's seven of us. Now you're taking three more in. And she said, baby, I'm just going to use what I have. What, what do we have in the cupboards? I'm just going to use what we have. I'm going I'm to make, I'm, look, God's going to make this stuff stretch. If you just... Use what you have. <laughs> and I, I watched my mother. I watched her. I watched her be diligent and just obeying God. Take, take them in. Take some more in. And I'm like, Mama, but what about us? She said, you're going to always be taken care of. Because I'm going to use what I have. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take this little bit. I'm going to give it back to God and watch God work it out. <laughs> tell you, boy, I got, I got fat as a little boy off that stuff, man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just, I'm just going through scriptures to, to look at folk who just use what they had. Amen. Go to 2 Kings chapter 4 now. 2 Kings chapter number 4. Somebody say, use what you have. Use what you have. Amen. Use what you have, man. I tell, you, I tell you, that's a word for somebody today because you've been complaining to God about what you don't have. And God is saying, look, I, look, hear the man of God today because he heard from me. And he's telling you to use what you have, amen? Because <laughs> I can take what you have. I can take that thing, make it special, bless it, and multiply it and give it back to you and bless your life forever and ever and ever. Praise the Lord, amen? Second Kings chapter number four. Huh. Here's another woman who had an issue. Verse number one, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bonded. Now there's some women who would say, just go ahead and take them. Just go ahead and take them. <laughs> but this woman didn't want her children to be in bonds, be a bondsman, amen? Didn't want them to be slaves. 
So she goes to the man of God. She said, hey, you know, my husband, he served God. He said, now you got to help me out. But look what the look what the man of God says to her. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house? Man of God, I didn't come. I didn't come for that. I come for a word from the Lord. Give me a word. But he said, the word is go do inventory. Go find out what you got in your house. Because whatever's in your house, God says, I can bless that and make it special. Amen. Amen. See, 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 some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all want to get stuff outside your house. I, I tell you right now, I tell you right now, some of y'all, there's some stuff in y'all closets, praise the Lord, that y'all haven't used in years and years and years. Wow. Amen. And that stuff could be a blessing to somebody else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But he, the man of God said, look, go, go do inventory. What you have in your house? And she said, thine handmaid had not. Look, look what she said. All I have in the house is just a pot of oil, man of God. That's all I have. He said, that's enough. That's, that's enough right there to get God working, to work on your side. And so look what he says. Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in the house, come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all the vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Now hold up a second. Your natural mind will say, well, how is God going to do this? How is this little oil going to fill up all these people's pots and they can't even fill my pot up? Mm. See, that's your problem. You want to be God. Oh. Amen. You want to be you want to be God and try to figure out how how he going to do it. Amen. Because you you trying to figure out how would I do it? Amen. And, and all God needs is for you to use what you have. That's all. Look, look, every time you just. Pour the oil. It's up to God to cause it to increase. This woman had to stand in faith that when she borrowed that stuff and said, God, look, you're going to fill it up. It's going to fill up. Oh, man. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. On last week. On last week. Last week. Last week. When I came back from the conference, God spoke to me. He said, look, whatever the people give you on that Sunday, which was last Sunday, I want you to give it to the man of God. I want you to bless your man of God. And so, so I had an expectation that somebody was going to give me something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know how much it was going to be. But somebody was going to give me something last week. Praise the Lord. I, I just, look, I just believe God. God, I, I don't know how you're going to do it, but it don't matter to me. It's going to be done. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Last week, watch this, watch this. Last week. You placed in my hand to give to the man of God one thousand two hundred fifty nine dollars and twenty five cents. I got I don't know how you're going to do it. But because I got a word from you, God, that, that, that I got to bless the man of God. And this is how it's going to come. I just had an expectation. God, you're going to do it. Amen. And God said, just use what you have. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. That probably doesn't affect his bottom line at all. But it's not about his bottom line. <laughs> it's about my bottom line. <laughs> it's about me using what I have. Amen. For God to be glorified here in the earth. Yeah. And, and watch this, watch this, watch this. So, 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 so you get the return for sowing into your man of God. But I get the return for sowing into my man of God. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, some, some preacher would say, they gave you how much? $1,259.25? And you did what? Yeah, I obeyed God. Amen? Because it's not about me and it's not about the amount it's about using what i have i just gotta just use what i have what you have in your hand and that's what he said whatever's in your hand that's what you're gonna use <laughs> what you say mitchell i didn't beg i didn't beg for none of it did i what you say okay okay verse number five verse five so she went from him 
and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Look at what happened. This woman just used what she had. All I have is a little oil in the pot. And the man of God said, that's enough. That's enough right there to prove God faithful in your situation. Amen. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Well, pastor, I don't have, I don't have meal in my barrel. Pastor, I don't have oil in a vessel. But well, watch this. Go to Second Chronicles. Chapter number 20, because you might have this in you. Amen. Come on. See, when I, when I learn to use what I have, I might not have a whole lot of money. Yeah. Come on here. Amen. I might not have a whole lot of clothes to give away. Come on here. I might not have all in the cruise. Yeah. Yeah. But it could be that I got a praise on the inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta use what I have, man. Because if all I have is a praise, God, I'm going to give you the best praise I can. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Look at verse number 15. See, see, look, look, look up, look up, look up, look up. See, you can't get intimidated by the devil because, watch this now, especially, especially when it comes down to sowing into your man of God. See, see, see. God is not looking at the amount that you give. He's looking yeah. at whether you're going to obey him or not. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And so sometimes people will sit there and say, well, I don't have nothing to give. What well, well, you do if you got a praise on the inside of you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And see, some of us sit on our hands wow. and we don't want to move. And God said, look, your praise can set a fire in yes. the house yes. if you just use what you have. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's see how the supernatural, can, look, 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 when I decide to use what is natural to me, God kicks in his super on my natural to cause him to be glorified, amen? See, that's what this is all about. I got to use what I have in the natural. I got this in the natural. I got to praise on the inside of me, amen? And when I use that to glorify God, watch what happens for me, Okay. Verse 15, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, <laughs> but God's. Jehoshaphat, look, look up, look up. Jehoshaphat had all these enemies coming against him. They were all around him. And man, fear just... And camped around in, in, the, in, the, in the camp. Fear was coming in. And God had to tell Jehoshaphat, look, man, don't get scared. I don't care how many enemies you have around you. It ain't your fight. It's my fight. I'm going to take care of this. So listen, you don't get into fear because this is my fight. Amen. Somebody say it's God's fight. Whatever fight you in is God's fight. <laughs> And God has a way. God has a way of dispersing your enemies. But let's just keep on reading. Look, so look what God, look what, look what he says. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Verse 16. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus. God showed them where they were. You shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jer Jeru. You shall not fight. You shall not fight in this battle. Don't you pick up your finger to fight in this battle. Amen. Amen. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see Woo. the salvation of the Lord. Man, I heard that before, didn't I? Didn't I hear that before? Didn't I hear God tell Moses, stand still and see the salvation of God? Look, Moses, you ain't going to have to fight this battle. Because I call, look, I cause a, a fire to hold back the enemies until you get across that dry land. Amen. And then when they try to pursue you, I cause the Red Sea to fall up and then collapse all of them in the Red Sea. Amen. <laughs> he say, he say, he say, you stand still. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. 
He said, when you've done all, sometimes you just got to just stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Standing not as if in fear, but standing in confidence that God, this is your battle. <laughs> you, look, you, you can just stand in front of your enemies like, huh, God got this. Yeah. Amen. God got it. Just somebody say stand. Stand, stand you still and see the salvation of God. Amen. Stand. But you got to use what you have. Amen. So watch this, watch this, watch this. So he says, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, uh, for the Lord is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, uh, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of, their, of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. Ooh, ooh. They, first, 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 the leader fell down. Then the people fell down. And they started worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, the children of the Korahites, and of the children of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Yeah. Loud. Well, Pastor Sharp, you know, I got to tell you, that sound system is really loud. The music is really loud, you know, and it really, it really, it really bothers me that y'all so loud. Well, how are you going to praise a God who's fighting your battle? How are you going to praise a God to get you off death row? Hold on, hold up a second. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. All of us were on death row. And they were about to pull a switch on us. But before they pulled the switch, the warden came in and said, hold up. Amen. They're letting you go. Because somebody else paid the price for you. How you going to act? You just ate your last meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're about to look. They're gonna hook you up. How you gonna act? And they tell you you free. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk out that casual. Oh, glory to God. No, I guarantee you. I guarantee you that you're gonna be loud. Okay, 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 okay. Hold up, hold up a sec. Hold up a sec. Hold up a sec. You remember in Acts chapter 16, the Bible talks about. That Paul and Silas got locked up yeah, yeah, yeah. for doing ministry. They got tired of this girl following them who was, who was full of demonic spirits. And they cast that spirit out. And they put them in jail on trumped up charges. Yeah. And so the Bible says, and at midnight, at midnight. At midnight. Paul and Silas yeah. began to sing and to praise yeah. God. And watch this. And the Bible says that all the prisoners heard them. Okay, 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 okay. So if all the prisoners heard them, amen, they had to be loud, amen. They, they, they couldn't have been whispering, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Bible says that as they were praising and worshiping God, there's something supernatural happened. God, God, I'm locked up in prison, but all I got right now is a praise. I'm, I'm locked up in, I'm locked up right now in my mind, but God, all I have is a praise in my mouth, amen. So they begin to sing praises unto God, and the Bible says, and immediately. Something so, so, <laughs> so begin to happen, amen. amen. Okay, 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 okay. I, I gotta finish reading, I gotta finish reading my script. Y'all calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay, okay. So, so verse 20, verse 20, verse 20. And they arose early in the morning. And they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Amen. Believe in the Lord, and you're going to be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Now listen to me now. Listen to me now. Hear what I got to say. That if you use what you have, God will supernaturally increase you. Amen. I received that. If, if you use what you have, God will increase you. Now, 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 if you want to prosper, hear what I just said. If you use what you have, God's going to increase you. Praise the Lord. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Didn't he say we were going to go into a fight? He, he said, he, he pointed to where the people were. Yeah. They're going to be over there. But instead of putting 
the warriors in front. Jehoshaphat said, I don't need no warriors right now. Yeah, yeah. I need, I need somebody to come and sing for me. Because when they sing, something's going to happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll get out by myself. I'll get out by myself. Praise Lord. He said, he said, he said hold on. I'm going to show you how you use what you have. Because in our own mind, we want the first division of, of this army, yeah. the second division of the Marines. Yeah. We, want the, we want the Air Force, and then we want the Navy carriers yeah. to come in. Yeah. Yeah. But God said, no, 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 don't get no carriers, don't get no Marines, don't get no Army cadets. Look, all I want you to do right now, I want you to get some singers. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to get some praises. Yeah, those that will worship me in spirit yeah. and in truth. This is how I'm going to deliver you out of this fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He say, he say, he say, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. He appointed singers unto the Lord. So, so he called some folk out. Amen. He called some folk out and appointed them. You're going to be the praise team today. <laughs> look, look, I, 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 I remember, I remember, I remember when we first started, when we first started, you know, you know, it was only a handful of us. So I, you know, I had to appoint all, all, all y'all praise team. And then when y'all finish praising, y'all gonna sit out in the audience, y'all gonna be the audience today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. We gonna get this thing right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> but he appointed singers unto the Lord and, and that they should praise in the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth how, how long? And when they began to sing <laughs> the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir which were come against Judah and, there, and they were smitten for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay them hold up a second now these, these, folk, these folk were friends with each other and now, now they, were, they, were all, they were all going against Jehoshaphat and now now because he used what he had. Yeah. Amen. God said, I'm, I'm going to take care of this thing. For, I'm going to turn them against each other and cause them to destroy each other. Yeah. It's kind of like your boss on your job. Yeah. Amen. Kind of like the folk that's been messing with you. Yeah. God's going to turn them against each other. <laughs> yeah, he's going to turn them against each other and cause you to have the victory. Amen. <laughs> you gotta use what you have, amen. Okay, okay, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. So, so he turned them against each other. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy each other. So they, they turned around. Look, they, they, they turned on one camp, and then the two of them are turned on each other, and now all of them dead. Okay, watch this, watch this. And when Judah came toward, they ain't even got to the fight yet. They, they not even at the fight. You got to get the picture. They not at the fight yet. Not yet, not yet. But while they're going to the fight, they singing and praising God. I'm going to the fight. But they singing and praising God. Amen. Yeah. This is the Lord's doing in this marvelous in our eyes. They going to the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They singing while they going. Yeah. Not knowing what God's going to do, but God's going to do something. Right. Amen. So when I get there, God, work this thing out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So, so, so watch this. Watch this. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and nobody escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the sp oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. You mean to tell me that God's going to deliver me? Going to win the fight for me? Yeah. And then gonna cause them to leave all they stuff. Yeah. So when I get there, yeah. I'm gonna pick up all they stuff. And it's gonna take me three days to get the stuff because of what God did for me. Because I opened my mouth and I begin to praise God with my own mouth. Amen. <laughs> I received that. Amen. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay, 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 hold on. Military. Who, who, who in the military? Who in the military? Who's, who was in the military? Anybody was in the military? Okay. Did you go to war, Brother John? Did you go to war? 
You, you wasn't in war? Anybody went to, you know? Okay, Clint, what war you in? Vietnam. You in Vietnam. Okay. When you were at war, did you put your finest stuff on? Your jewelry? <laughs> your, your rings? Your gators? I mean, did you? I mean, did you? Did you? Did you bring your money from the bank? Did you take your money out the bank, put it in your pocket, so so when you go to war, I mean, at least you could pay for something, huh? Okay, okay. Well, well, look at these boys. Look at these boys. God calls them to bring all their stuff to the fight. Amen. Kind of remind me. Kind of remind me of when He delivered the children of Israel. He said, "Go ask the people that's been putting you in bondage." Ask them for all their stuff. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel the debt once you get over to the Red Sea. <laughs> and here is God in this fight. Watch it now. Tell, look, these people bring all their stuff with them. So when they get there and all the stuff is there, God said, get the stuff. Just pick all of it up. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Because I used what I had. Amen. Yeah. Listen, when you learn how to praise God, Keisha, I need you to sing for me, baby. Watch this, watch this. It stifles the enemy. The enemy don't know how to handle you when, you when you're praising God, when you're not complaining about what you don't have, but you're using what you have. It stifles the enemy because he know that he's trying to put it on you, amen? Not only that, but, but when I learn how to praise God, watch this now, in the midst of my challenge, it brings God on the scene. Mm. Man, when the presence of God is in the place. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I mean, when the atmosphere is set for God to move, amen. God can do some supernatural things, amen. Okay, okay. And then, then when I learn how to praise God, it releases me from any kind of emotional bondage that I have, amen. Any type of fear or, or my mind is being messed with. The Bible says I can have peace in the midst of my challenge, amen. <laughs> And then when I learn how to praise God, it causes deliverance to come. Amen. Listen, man, when they when they came, when they got over the Red Sea, the first thing they began to do was to praise God. Amen. Because God had delivered. Look, look what the Bible says. God's going to deliver us out of everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Watch this now. When I learn how to praise God, God will defend my rights. <laughs> I'm talking about using what you have, man. And if all you got is a praise in your mouth. God will defend you, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Watch this. When I learn how to use what I have, it's going to trigger the supernatural power of God to get involved in my situation, amen. When I learn how to use what I have, amen. And watch this, finally, finally. When I use what I have, it'll place me in God's protective custody. You remember Job? The devil couldn't, the, the, the Bible says that, that, that really, really, God turned Job, the enemy on the Job. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an upright man. Yeah, yeah. And he said, God, the reason why he's praising you is because you got the hedge of protection yeah. around him. Amen. Yeah. But God said, I tell you what, I tell you what, all you could, the furthest you could go is right here. Yeah. Amen. But everything else, he's in my custody. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can't mess with him after this yeah. point. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I learn how to praise God and use what I have. Amen. God said the devil can't mess with you. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. But I got to learn how to use what I have. Amen. Come on, baby. Come on. Amen. Use what I have. Amen. I'm going to use what I have. Cause see, see, this is what's in my house. Amen. I'm going to use what I have. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Cup up there, man. Cup up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to use what I got. Because that's in my house. Amen. That's in my house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, so, 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 okay, okay, what do you have? What do you have that's in your house? I received that. What do you have that's in your house? Okay, better yet, what do you have right now? See, because God, look, 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 I might not be able to see, but I sure can lift my hands. I might not be able to harmonize, but I sure can lift up my hands. God, this is what I have today. I got, I got, I got a hand, I got to lift up, I can lift up my hand today. Father, I, look, I don't have, look, but I can stand up to my feet and give God some praise, amen.